How's it going, eh? Welcome back to the Great Crew North. Welcome to spring. It's here, folks. Today is March 9th. The high today was 9 degrees. We're sitting a little bit, I think we're sitting about 7 today, and I'm going to turn you around and show you what's going on here. Folks, we're finally melting. We had 36 inches of snow this year. It was the top of our snowpack, which for those of you, probably about this, that much snow, at least 3 feet. But it's finally melting. We still have 8 to 10 inches over there. But over here, this first quarter of my backyard is finally melting. So I'm going to give you guys some spring lawn tips. I had to also dig out the sunglasses today. Without the trees, the sun is real bright up here. So first thing in spring lawn tips, go out, know your land. So as, I, as a lawn care not always says, know your land. And as I always like to say, know your land. You're not going to get the best lawn in the block by sitting in your house looking at your grass going, oh, I wish it was better. You need to know your land. So what I suggest is you need to get out there as soon as the snow melts off your lawn. Just kind of walk around, take a look. I'm going to name a couple things here that you want to be looking for as you're taking a look around. Uh, upcoming just at the end of this video but yeah just get out there take a look assess what you're looking at how green is your lawn is there any bare spots is there any major damage caused by winter next spring lawn tip everybody starts talking about raking so what you need to do is over the winter you get a lot of winter die off and compaction as the snow kind of presses down on your lawn this is just caused by as the snow melts it moves like a glacier and crushes all your grass so you need to get out there and get the rake into your lawn to help open things up so things can breathe better. So the reason that you want to do this is just to open things up, get some more oxygen down into your lawn. Your lawn needs to breathe and grow, so getting that oxygen down your lawn is definitely helpful. So, so what you need to do, definitely wait till all your snow melts, all your snow is gone, and then wait till things dry out. As you can see over here, when I'm walking in the lawn, there's water coming out between my feet. Things are still very, very soft. You want to wait until everything dries out to the point where you're not uh, getting soaked every step you take in your lawn. Because if you don't wait, you're just going to end up tearing things apart. So you want to wait until everything dries out, then you can go at it and do your raking. You want to rake up all that thatch and dispose of that off the property. That's going to help your lawn thicken up. So it's a little bit of kind of a friendly fire idea. You're taking out some of the healthy stuff, but you're bringing in new, more healthy stuff. So make sure that you get your raking done sometime in the spring. For us here, it's normally about mid to late April when we actually get out to get the raking done once everything's dried out. Secondly, let's talk about products. So products wise, a lot of you guys are looking at pre-emergence, pre-emergent for my people down in the transition zones and the northern people just above the transition zones. You guys are getting very close to pre-emergent time. You wait until your soil temps hit 50 degrees. That is when your grass and the weeds actually start growing. That is when it's time to put down your pre-emergent. Now, you need to wait until your soil temps sustain at 50 degrees. Uh, we had a day, abnormally warm day, end of February, where it was about 12 degrees outside and I took a soil temp of 44. That doesn't mean that that's what the soil temps actually are represented by that temperature. That temperature of 44 is a representation of what the soil temps, the surface soil temps, have been heated because of the warmth that day. So you need to wait until you get sustained. So three, four, five days in a row, getting close to 50 degrees, and then you can decide, okay, time to get pre-emergence down. After you put your pre-emergence down, two to three weeks after that, you can go ahead and get your first fertilizer application down. Uh, that's gonna be, for us here, about last, second, second last week to the last week of April, first week of May. And then once you get your fertilizer down, it's normally only a matter of seven to 10 days before that nitrogen kicks in, gets the lawn grown again, and then it's time to go ahead and enjoy the first mow. Folks, we're only about two months away from getting out and enjoying the first mow. So it's very, it's coming very fast. You need to be ready, pay attention when the season comes this year. So another thing that happens a lot of times in the spring is our temperature varies. So people will put down their pre-emergent, like what happened last year, I put down my pre-emergent mid to late October. We had sustained temp soil temps over 50 for about a week. But then what happened was we went into a deep freeze about early May and it actually snowed on May 11th. So people will panic thinking that they lost their application. You did not lose your application. What happened is, is just the soil, the, the temperatures dropped, but as long as you've had sustained temps where your soil temp shouldn't drop too much. And all you gotta think about is snow is just powdered rain. That's all it is, so there's no worry about that. If you have something like that where you get a big deep freeze, 
don't worry, you're not going to lose anything. Yes, it, it's unfortunate that it happened that way, but you're not going to lose everything, and everything you did was not pointless. Next, let's talk about seeding. Now, one of my videos that have recently got over 1,000 views, first video I've got over 1,000 views, thank you guys for that, um, is the spring overseeding video, and I'm going to be doing a sequel to that coming out in the next couple of weeks. But if you guys are looking to overseed in the spring, think of one key thing. Is my lawn less than 30% grass? So if you look at your lawn and you go, yes, there's my lawn is mostly weeds or my lawn is brand new, it's just a dirt, then you can go ahead and seed in the spring. And there'll be a full detailed video coming out next week about how to do that. But if your lawn is mostly grass, it has a lot of weed problems, but there is more than 30% of it is actual grass. Don't worry about overseeding the spring. We're gonna focus on strengthening the grass that's already there all season with my fertilizer plan and my mowing plan. We're gonna push the weeds out naturally. You are gonna have to deal with some weeds this year. However, come fall, it's time for you to do a fall renovation. Once you do your fall renovation, next year you will have a weed-free lawn guaranteed. So that's pretty much it for the spring lawn tips here. Now without further ado, let's take a quick look at what I am seeing in my lawn and um, any tips that this will give you guys to look for what you need to look for in your lawn when the snow starts melting, any problems that you've managed to have over winter. So I took my soil temperature today, 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for those astute of you that are mainly intelligent, you know that that is only one degree above 32, which is freezing. So we are definitely nowhere near anywhere to our growing season yet. But I can say there is a lot of green in here. It doesn't look appear that way on camera, but she's looking really, really nice. Great color for this time of year. So for those of you looking for soil temps, this is just like a regular like meat thermometer or like even the thermometer for your turkey. Stick it in about two inches. You can take it in a couple spots, then that's how I see there's the, gone down to 32, so it's still obviously not that warm out here. So first of all, the first thing I'm going to look at is color. Um, how did my winterizer hold from last year? Definitely looking at it, winterizer held great. So that means that next year, if I follow the same winterizer plan, we're not going to have any major problems. Next thing we're going to look at is thatch, thatch buildup snow mold so this right here this is what we call snow mold it's kind of like this webby looking stuff that ends up growing on top of the grass what happens here is there's an air gap between your lawn and the snow on top so this is mainly because because my lawn can be pretty bumpy um, in spots this is a spot that's very uneven this is what's causing the snow mold however short cut grass that's very smooth, can get snow mold as well. It's just caused by an air gap caused between your soil and the, the snow caused by the leaf surface of the grass. This mold forms on the grass blades. It's kind of just decomposing the grass because it's there's moisture trapped in between the, the snow, which is kind of like a blanket and the grass. This is nothing to worry about. What you're gonna do eventually when things kind of warm up and things dry out, you're gonna get your rake in here and you're gonna rake this all up and open it up and let things breathe but for now it's not anything major to worry about. Snow mold is something that a lot of people tend to panic about. Um, it's seen very bad cases, I'll show some pictures here, uh, in shortcut turf in places that get a lot more snow coverage than I do. So, But it's not anything to worry about, it's mainly just an appearance thing and it tends to grow its way right out. It's one of those diseases similar to dollar spot, nitrogen, you can fertilize your way out of it, no problem. So nothing major to worry about. Just make sure that you get and rake it and open it up as soon as things dry out. So maybe keep in mind where those snow mold parts are so you can get them raking and drying out. And if you cut your lawn very, very tall last year, you're gonna notice uh, and, and you didn't get it down short at the end of the year, like if you, your last mow last year was four inches, you're gonna notice a lot of snow mold this year because of that patch build up. I'm noticing a little bit because of the tornado we had, there was a lot of walking on the lawn late in the year, so I'm noticing a little bit of snow mold. I'm not sure what I'm gonna see up by the house where there's even more walking, but for now, it doesn't seem too bad. It's manageable. I get it every year, but it's manageable 
it's just one of those funguses that you can grow your way out of there's no way to panic next thing i'm looking for is just kind of anything kind of compacted push down like this this is a clump of clumping fescue nothing really to panic about with this this is just a clump of clumping fescue once you get the rake in here and start to open this up it will all start breathing again and you'll have no problems final thing i'm looking for as i'm walking through here looking for vole damage voles are field mice that dig holes in your lawn don't really see any here don't tend to get a lot of voles up here the one thing i am noticing very clearly though is we have a lot of earthworms you can see all the earthworm mounds through here that's what that is that is that is that is now for those of you who do shortcut turf and i worked on a golf course for a year so i know uh earthworms are very annoying when you're trying to get your shortcut curse and you're trying to get those reels in the earthworm mounds deal dull your reels but for us tall cut guys earthworm mounds are just a blessing if you're getting a lot of earthworm mounds it means you're doing something right you got a lot of worms in your lawn you're feeding off your soil it means your soil is really good because the soil is everything strengthen your soil your lawn will grow better so going into this spring the main three things you're going to be focusing on is mowing height and fertilization if you focus on those two key pillars you will help strengthen your lawn. So we're gonna strengthen your lawn without chemicals. We're gonna strengthen your lawn without killing the whole thing. We're gonna strengthen what you already have by introducing new, better cultivars of grass, following good cultural practices with mowing and fertilizing. And that's the only thing we need to do to strengthen your lawn. So you don't need to de demolish everything, resod it. You don't need to do any of that. We're gonna strengthen it with what you already have. It's also a good time to take a look at your gardens if you're like me and you didn't get to pruning back some of your soft body perennials in the fall, now you get to see all the work that you have coming up for you in the spring. So thank you guys for watching this episode of the Great Green North. You guys have been great. Uh, this spring, a whole bunch of you are coming back from last year and you're helping build and grow the channel. We have gained over a thousand views in the last 30 days. My first video hit over a thousand views. We're almost at a hundred subscribers. This channel is growing. So for those of you who don't know, this is the channel where I help you do lawn from vine and disgusting to green and beautiful in a little under a year. I give you real time lawn tips from my house for somebody who's worked in the industry for over four years and is an extreme hobbyist in my backyard myself. Uh, my, I have taken this lawn from ground and disgusting to green and beautiful in just under two years. So I'm going to help you guys do that with your own lawn. So you can have the best lawn on the block. You can put lawn stripes in it. Everybody's going to come up to you and comment how amazing your lawn is. So for those of you who are brand new here in the spring, and I know that about 50% of you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. You're going to be coming back and getting more and more details and building off one video to another really helps you strengthen that lawn. So you don't just need to watch one. If you watch all the videos, it will really help you build your lawn all year. So please subscribe. There's plenty more coming here. So the Great Green North, my name is Wim Murray. Thank you guys for watching. Please check out my website where you can get real-time lawn coaching and my Patreon. And for the Great Green North, my name is Wim Murray. Keep it green.